What is Fly Bounce? Short story, when I was growing up I spent my Christmases with my grandparents in the east coast of New Zealand. Uh, it was a farm, lots of flies in the area. And every so often a fly or six would come into the house and just do this, just fly around, bouncing inside an invisible box in the middle of the room, ricocheting off walls of air. Uh, here's a close-up, revealing the limitations of my Bryce fly. The wing's flat, by the way. And uh, by playing in the DTE, I've managed to get it to spread disease. So uh, yeah, something for another tutorial. Fly bounce looks like this when you do your first landscape animation. Just these corners turn out. Oof. 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 Real lunch losing movement. Well, let's have a look at how fly bounce came about. Here's a simple scene. I want to slalom around this little peak in four frames. Simple. Let's look at the specs of this experiment. The duration for this pass is 8 seconds at 25 frames per second. Uh, in this demo I'm running in auto record or auto key mode, which means every change in the scene, whether it's camera position, sky changes or, or object changes will register as a keyframe. If you're running in auto key mode I really suggest you lock a few objects in case you know you accidentally create moving mountains and uh, rising tides in a world where the sun rises and sets in half a second. I'm working in camera view mode at the moment and basically I'm just setting four keyframes using three steps. Move forward in time, move the camera forward through the scene and then just rotate the camera so I've got a nice composition at the time where I'm going to be in my keyframe. Now in making this path there's going to be a bit of jiggery, pokery, a bit of uh, jittery motion here, but ultimately I'm just finesse positioning the camera and the composition as I work through my four keyframes. Now in direct view I can see the trajectory a little better, and look, no sharp corners, smooth and fluid. So you can expect that when I play back the wireframe the movement will be not- what the- you're catching that, right? The sharp corner bounces? And here is where we reveal one of Bryce's dirty little secrets. Bryce will auto-smooth your translations, your movements in space but it does not auto-smooth rotations. And you won't find this in the manual. This is a Keyflame exclusive, my friends. And here are a couple of demos to back this up. Here's a four keyframe animation over eight seconds looking from above. We're looking down on the camera. I just entered a start keyframe, moved forward in time two seconds, reposition the camera, move forward two seconds, reposition the camera, move forward two seconds, etc, etc. The camera doesn't rotate, it just moves position or translates. And you can see Bryce has interpolated a smooth path for the camera to follow. No bounces. Fine. All good. Here's another four keyframes, over eight seconds. Camera is rotating on the spot. Look at this. Bang! <laughs> Bang! Similar creation method. Sharp transitions here. Linear speed rotation. No acceleration, no deceleration. Now all is not lost. Running the last animation through the dark arts behind the advanced motion lab, or AML, and we get far smoother transitions. But we're not getting into the AML for this tutorial. Just know that there is at least one way of smoothing your rotations. Now here's another form of fly bounce that isn't created by rotation. It's actually created by Bryce, auto-smoothing your translations. Well, with all these problems, how are we going to fix them? I'm going to give you two non-AML options you can use to reduce the significance and possibly remove completely the occurrence of fly bounce in your scene. First up is Roller Coaster View. It's the easiest of the two. It's not the best, but you can make it work for you. It completely eliminates the most jarring fly bounce problem, which is rotational fly bounce. 
Under Camera Attributes, select Animation and check Align. Take a look at the camera as I OK the Attributes window and that's it. A slight reorientation there. Align mode overrides any rotation you've put on your object, which in this case is the camera. Your view is directly down the tangent of your trajectory, always, like you're on a roller coaster. So with that in mind, you no longer frame your view with rotation, rather you adjust your trajectory, which is already auto-smoothed, and you just aim your trajectory at the view you want to capture. So that's a line mode. The second solution is far more serious. It relies on knowing things that Daz does not want you to know. Obviously, this knowledge is too dangerous for you to have because you won't find it in the Bryce 5.5 manual, nor 6, nor the current version of Bryce 7. Suppression, that's the only possible explanation why they have refused to document a feature set that has been in existence for the last 10 years. I had a tough ethical decision to make. Tell you about this feature set here and now, or send it to WikiLeaks. I hope I made the right decision. And the feature set is a set of trajectory modifier keys. Now the manuals do tell you about keyframe constraining keys. So you can constrain your movement of a keyframe in the X, Y, or Z directions. So if you're a Mac user, you can hold down the control. No, wait, you can hold down the, you, you, you hold down the command and option. If, if you're a Mac user, you hold down the Mac, you hold down the, the Apple, no, the, the, the command and the control. If you want to constrain it to the Y direction, you, you hold down the option and then the, and the, if you're a PC user, you hold down the control and shift, you hold down the, you hold down the, the key, <sighs> to be frank, I always forget which key combo does which constraint, and I tend to end up being wrong two-thirds of the time, screwing up my trajectory even more. But here's something much easier to remember for anything, keyframe markers or objects. If you want to constrain movement in the X direction, hold the X key down. If you want to constrain movement in the Z direction, hold the Z key down. And I'll give you three guesses what key you hold down for constraining movement in the Y direction. Give you a clue, it rhymes with I. Think about it. Why would Daz only supply the most difficult key combination to remember in the manual? In a workflow, might I add, that has undo for every action except time-based changes. Answer, suppression, cover up. You can't handle the truth. There are four special trajectory modifier keys. I'm just gonna tell you about three of them and those are the T, B and C keys. Easy to remember, to be continued. T, B, C, to be continued. T, B, C, to be continued. Hold your mouse over a keyframe. Hold down the T key and drag left or right. If you look at the bottom left of your interface, T stands for tension and there is a numerical value associated with it. More tension draws in the tangent vectors, creating tighter corners. Drag the other way and oh yes, oh release that tension, oh that feels good, oh that's so good on my spline, yes, oh lower, lower, oh yeah, oh where did you learn that, oh she's not my wife, she's just a relative deeper, oh etc. The other two keys, bias and continuity, aren't nearly as funny, but they work the same way. Continuity creates a corner at your keyframe. That's a lot of k sounds. Now I know this tutorial is about reducing sharp corners, but this modifier is great for deliberately creating bounces. Or, dragged the other way, you can create an anti-bounce, something I call a flinch. You won't see that documented anywhere though. And finally, bias. This is a weird one. It combines tension and a rotation. Take a look at this. This is a four keyframe trajectory and it's well worth familiarizing yourself with this curve in 3D space before I go on. The bias does two things at the same time. Like tension, it increases or decreases the magnitude 
or length of a tangent vector, while at the same time rotating the orientation of the keyframe in the plane of the affected keyframe and its two neighboring keyframes. <laughs> Be honest, I lost you after the word rotating, right? <laughs> so let me demonstrate. Here's our keyframe to be affected. We're going to add bias to it because someone told us all the cool kids were doing it. And uh, holding down the B key, we can see, ah, it's like tension with the lengthening and the shortening of tangent vectors. Okay. And it's rotating something. And it looks like I can't rotate more than 180 degrees. And I'm really moving the mouse all the way to the left and right of the screen here. Uh, but okay, we get that. But after a while of trying to use this tool, you start thinking, okay, but how is it rotating? What plane are we in? What if I want to bias my keyframe dead vertically? Who chooses what angle we're rotating this keyframe in? Answer is you have no choice. The choice is made for you and is dependent on neighboring keyframes. Take a look. I'm just changing my view so that the two neighboring keyframes to the one I'm changing overlap each other. Why? So you can see the plane of rotation. Any three points in space define a triangle, and that triangle lies on a plane. If you want a vertically rotating keyframe, one of your keyframes has to be directly above or below the one you're biasing. Now, I know this isn't the most intuitive way of doing things. I'm just describing what's happening. Don't shoot the messenger. So, how do we use these tangent modifiers to reduce fly bounce? Well, here's a common example. An added keyframe causes a weird bulge in your trajectory. And you, you just find the camera move is, is distracting now. Or you can use the T or B keys to help smooth out the curves. Oh, and here's a common problem. You step your way painstakingly crafting a complex trajectory and you go back to the beginning and the camera is facing the wrong way. But as soon as you press play, the camera snaps back to the right position. It took me ages to figure this out. I'd call it a bug and the bug is that the start point of, the, of a trajectory has a tangent, a really small tangent that extends just a little into the negative or reversed value. You can barely see it. But if you zoom in, tap the keyframe, hold your finger down on the T key and just nudge that tension back into the direction of flow, everything's all sweet.